let's take a look at the TwinGate system. Now I've logged into our admin console, 95palms.twingate.com. That's my console. Yours will be different. The first thing we do is add a remote network. Now that's a logical separation of the resources. The resources are machines or environments that you want to give users access to. So the first thing, remote network, I've added three, AWS Prod, GCP Dev, and St. Louis. That makes sense, right? I could have a physical location, St. Louis, Boston, San Francisco. I could have AWS versus GCP. I could have GCP Dev, GCP Prod, things like that. I can have as many as I want. After I've added a remote network, then I want to go into it and deploy a connector. Now, I've already deployed one of my connectors, but if I click on Fervent Cobra and I want to deploy that connector, you can always rename these. Um, I have the options of Docker, Helm charts, everything down to Pulumi as well. I need to generate uh, tokens unique for each connector. And remember, I always recommend two connectors, or we always recommend two connectors. That way you have failover and high availability, of course, and we handle that for you. In this case, it's Docker, so I'm just going to run this Docker command. But the commands, I copy and paste it in the environment where I want the connector to be. The connector needs to be where it has access to the resources you're going to give users access to. The connector makes that happen for us. So now that I've got my connector out there, I can add resources. Now I've ad already added two, but to do so, I click Add Resource. I can do it by fully qualified domain name, IP address, or CIDR range. And I can also restrict protocols and which ports they have. If you look here, my Raspberry Pi, 22 and 8080 are allowed. So now I've got my locations and they're my remote networks. I've got my connectors out there so I can connect to those. I've added some resources. Well, now I need to give people access to it. So I go up to Teams. And I have only one group in my case. And normally these groups would come from your IDP. You can see Google, Okta, et cetera. I have the everyone group, and then I assign those resources to each group. We can do that by editing the resource. I can also have users assign them to groups, multiple groups, all that good stuff. Almost complete role-based access control. Now another thing we can do is control device access. You can see some of my devices are verified. That means they've met a certain requirement to be verified. And I can control that in my trusted profiles here. And you can see some of the options for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, etc. If I go to policies, I only have one policy, the default policy, but if I click in there, I say it's you gotta authenticate every five days and use two-step verification. Now we can also control access to websites, to resources that you might have, like salesforce.com or something like that within the TwinGate network. I don't have any of those in my environment, but that's also possible. Last thing is we do have our identity providers. I want to show you those. Those are the ones we have right now. One login, Azure AD, of course, Google, and Okta we talked about. Device integrations, CrowdStrike, and Jamf. Intune's coming soon. And secure DNS. This allows you to do DNS over HTTPS. Now, I've got Cloudflare set up in my environment, uh, but this allows my entire environment to do DNS over HTTPS when I'm connected. Last thing we'll show you is the, the client. Right at the top here, I have my client running, login in 95 Palms. This can happen before login. I'm doing it manually in front of you. It's going to make me authenticate, log in with my user, opening TwinGate, and I'm connected. If I go to the top, it's going to tell me exactly which devices I have access to. And now I can ping those. I can SSH in to my Raspberry Pi, and I can access it via port 8080. That's all there is to it.